we set sail for the island of Sumatra. This island, like the rest of Indonesia, is at the mercy of large corporations who raise and burn the rich Indonesian forests, turning them into vast monocultures. These practices, often dubious, threaten the survival of the last Sumatran elephant populations, a species critically endangered. Over the past 75 years, 80% of the population of Sumatran elephants have disappeared. We arrive at Rio province, in the central part of eastern Sumatra. Prior to 1982, 80% of this territory consisted of primary tropical forests. A haven for many species, Indonesia's forests are home to nearly 15% of all living species on the planet. In the 1980s, the Indonesian government gave most of its forest concessions to large companies that have raised, burned, and converted it into monocultures. Today, the production of palm dominates, but the land is also used for lumber and pulp and paper production. Over the past 25 years, 70% of the elephant's territory has been destroyed. During our trip in Indonesia, in both Borneo and the island of Sumatra, we've seen ancient forests cut down and really ravaged land, where all the water was removed from the soil to dry out and eventually give way to monocultures that are now the basis of the Indonesian economy. Companies producing palm oil ransack the forests and the valuable peatlands of Sumatra in order to develop palm plantations, which now stretch out as far as the eye can see. Recently, other concessions were granted to large corporations. And if nothing is done to stop this massacre, there will soon be no more of this pristine habitat for the species of Sumatra. The Droop's palm produces palm oil, the most used vegetable oil in the world. It is found everywhere, in food, cosmetics, and biofuels. More than half of the food products in our supermarkets contains this palm oil. The rapid deployment of these monocultures at the expense of the forest is growing. Each year, approximately two million hectares of forests are cut and burned. In terms of area, it is the equivalent of six football fields disappearing every minute. Sunato is an Indonesian biologist who works for the World Wildlife Fund. A specialist in elephants and Sumatran tigers, Sunato agreed to accompany us during this expedition into the heart of what remains of the Indonesian forests. Wow, yeah, look at this. These trees look older than the other, right? Yes. Many are just uh, recently planted here. You can see here the, the age or uh, the height of the plants are different from the place over here that we can yeah. tell. All that was forest before, not a long time ago. Yeah, until 1982, more than 80% of the land of yeah. Rio province was forest until 1982 also. And you can see here uh, the smoke over there. Yeah. Uh, there's still some areas that are still under the, the process of the deforestations. Oh, yeah. and, uh, Typically, the, the conversion from forest into uh, the oil palm involves the burning. All the animals, they have no other choice but you know, leave the area or even... Leave or, or die. die. Yeah. Yeah. Scientists estimate that between 80 and 90 percent of all forest species will die during these clear cuts. The international scientific community has reacted strongly to the planned massacre of Indonesian forests. They have lobbied the Indonesian government to protect its forests and its biodiversity. Parks were then created to preserve what had not already been destroyed. But the safeguards were never met. Some companies are still continuing production within park boundaries, 
and small farmers, frustrated by an economy that offers little advantage for them, began to illegally exploit patches of protected land to plant palm trees. Indonesian authorities turn a blind eye. Droop's palm produced by local farmers will be purchased by the large corporations complicit in the destruction of the last remaining patches of protected forest. Wow. Yeah, look at this fresh fruit bunch yeah. of uh, the oil palm. Yeah. And it has to be processed really quickly. So okay. it cannot stay for too long, otherwise the quality will be really bad. That's why the, uh, it is important to, to have the, uh, uh, the mills close enough okay. to the plantation area. Yeah. And there's two types of oil, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, two kinds. First is made from uh, the outer part yep. uh, of uh, the skin, and the, the other is from the inside, the inner, which is yeah. the, the kernel. Yeah, and the, the kernel palm oil, uh, they, uh, they are made uh, for uh, higher quality products, like yeah. uh, probably cosmetics, cosmetics or, or like uh, the chocolate, yeah. made for chocolate, mm. high quality food. Yeah. So not long time ago, that was, uh, you know, a virgin forest. Yes, as we can tell here, there are some uh, leftover uh, trees here, yeah. the dye trees. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. This tree. And it's amazing, you know, they're so quiet. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's no life here. Yeah, at, at this time of day, uh, if we were in the forest, like maybe 20 years ago, yeah. <laughs> it would have been much different, right? I mean, a lot of noise we can, we can expect from yeah. the rainforest, but you know, here at this yeah. time of day when animals are supposed to be hungry and looking for food, we barely hear any, yeah, yeah except yeah. like few birds that are singing, yeah. very common bird. So there's no room anymore for tiger or, you know? Well, for, for tiger, it'll be too, uh, too open, yeah? yeah. The, the tiger needs somewhere to hide, right? Yeah. yeah. Life has disappeared at the heart of the palm groves. Only a few years ago, the plant and animal species formed a complete ecosystem, unrivaled in its wealth anywhere else on the planet. The national parks should ensure the conservation of these species. But the lack of competent authorities on the ground has given free rein to poachers, who have destroyed all conservation efforts. Created in 2004, the Tesonilo National Park was to protect 1,000 square kilometers of forest. Today, about 80% of the park is now exploited illegally by poachers. It is near the Tesonilo Park that the World Wildlife Fund has developed a special patrol. The Elephant Brigade is known here as the Flying Squad and regularly intervenes to keep wild elephants away from plantations situated on the outskirts of the national park. There used to be around 4,000 Sumatran elephants back in the uh, mid-80s. Rough calculation now, uh, the population is just around 1,000 left. And there are around, possibly around 500 in captivity now. Wow, that's this is Rahman. Hi, Rackman. Hello. Hi. How old is he? He's around 32 years old. And that's a and, female? And the female here. Lisa. And the baby, Imbo. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi, baby. Look at this. Come. And the baby, Imbo. Come, Imbo. <laughs> Almost three years old. Come here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. You okay? Yeah. Perfect. Good. Okay, we can go. Jalan. When did you start the flying squad? Well, uh, we started at the early 2004. And what was the goal of the flying squad? Uh, the, the initial goal was pretty simple. We faced a lot of problems of uh, human-elephant conflict where uh, a lot of uh, wild elephants come outside of uh, their habitats because of the uh, increasing uh, area becoming uh, plantations. Yeah, because they don't have anywhere to go anymore. Yes, and having this uh, squad uh, where we train the elephants uh, to chase the 
uh, wild elephant back to their natural habitat will uh, help reduce the conflict and reduce the, uh, uh, the victim from both sides, humans and the, uh, the elephant at the same time. And mind your head here, the gate yeah. is not that high compared to the elephant. <laughs> well, your elephant is much bigger than mine, actually. Yes, and I have to do this <laughs> to make me safe. <laughs> It's tough being elephant uh, here in central Sumatra, especially in Bale Raja, uh, where their habitat is almost totally uh, converted into oil pumps. Despite the situation, they still are surviving. The elephant brigade must complete a rigorous training to respond to the commands of their mouths. A special relationship based on respect and mutual trust is essential to enable the patrol to act effectively in all situations. We patrol areas where the plantations are close to Tesonello Park. We try to prevent elephants from entering plantations and destroy everything. That is why we use guns. The noise frightens them and makes them flee. Without the intervention of the patrol, conflict escalates rapidly, often resulting in the deliberate poisoning of elephants that threaten plantations. Poisoned fruit is used as bait and gives the elephants no chance. They die for simply wandering onto cropland. The victims are many, and the education of the locals would perhaps be the only salvation for the last wild Sumatran elephants. Not all villagers prey on elephants. We should be able to treat them the same way we treat humans. Elephants are highly migratory and require large territories. They form herds that can reach up to 15 individuals. Even within the park, elephants are increasingly confined because of illegal logging. They sometimes venture into cultivated areas, creating problems with squatters who want to protect their plantations. When the park was established, the park was already uh, in, in a very bad condition at that time. So basically almost like land of nobody, and that's why these encroachers started to come. So the, uh, the encroachers that were already there at that time uh, become even more rampant because they possibly invite more people. And now almost 80% uh, of the area is, is now gone and turns into uh, oil palm mainly. Duduk, duduk. Quite amazing. Yes. In the heart of the park, another patch of forest is ravaged, burnt, the first step before planting palm trees. Who did this? This area, uh, what I heard, is, is done by uh, the local people here not far from this area that they still believe that this area is still part of their customary land. But is there any police or you know park gardens around? Yes, there are, but it's not enough and not efficient enough, I think, in, in dealing with uh, a very complex uh, ways of uh, forest destruction in this area. It, it's so complex. People who are in the field are basically generally are just poor people that happen to uh, need some money or uh, just to sustain their life. The process not only uh, caused the, uh, the deforestation and the uh, degradation or even extinction of some species, but also the smoke, for example, when uh, during the dry seasons, there usually uh, the area is full of smoke and we also uh, suffer from smoke even for the people in the, in the cities, even the neighboring countries also suffer from smoke because of this kind of process. Although the process is illegal, 
They burn the forest to simplify the logging operation. The CO2 accumulated throughout the life of a tree is released into the atmosphere, contributing significantly to global warming. To help protect the last wild elephants, Sonato's team use collars to track their movements. Hey, we've got the coordinate for the elephant. Oh yeah? Yeah. Here. This is where the elephant is, and our camp is here. So it's not too far. So it's about one hour drive. So should we go? Yep, I think so. We, the sooner the better. Great. In addition to the flank squad, we also have a patrolling team that regularly patrol wider areas to detect uh, uh, the whereabouts of the wild elephant. So uh, ideally, we know first uh, the, the movement of the wild elephant before they go into plantation areas, because when they are in the plantation areas, it will be more difficult to drive them out of that. So the best would be to detect them first and prevent them from even entering. This is the time when they just basically wake up yeah. from uh, yeah. the sleep during the hot day. Yeah. And they usually want water yeah. uh, to have and enjoy it for a while. So, so yeah, good. that's the situation. Okay. All right. A receiver picks up a signal from the radio collar on an elephant. It guides the team through a grove of acacia trees, widely used by the pop and paper okay. industry. No doubt, the feces are fresh. We are on the right track. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. An elephant has come to eat the fiber just under the bark of this tree. This kind of damage provokes the ire of the plantation owners. Although this is not the biggest. We used to have a bigger one, but yeah. That's pretty big. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, step on it. <laughs> Feel it. Excitement grips the group as we approach. Wild elephants are constantly hunted by poachers and have become aggressive towards anyone who confronts them in their territory. There it is. So close, avoid any confrontation. It's a funny feeling when you are in front of them because there is a lot of emotion. We are facing a huge beast and at one point there was an exchange of eye contact. We didn't know whether to stay or run away but the feeling 
is quite difficult to describe. A mix of fear and mutual respect. All in one look, it's really fascinating. An unforgettable moment stuck in my memory for the rest of my days. In the end, there were 13 of them. It was pretty amazing, a truly incredible moment, a unique instant, because these elephants, they are wild, and of course, they don't want contact with humans. And thanks to our guides, we were able to follow them. It was really an amazing moment. This special meeting with the last wild Sumatran elephants helps us understand the importance of the program for the protection and prevention of conflict established by the World Wildlife Fund. The success of the Elephant Brigade is based on close ties between the animals and their mounts. The daily bath helps build these essential links between elephants and their mahouts. This special moment, almost intimate, allows us to witness the intelligence of these exceptional animals. To protect the last wild elephants, the flying squad regularly patrols the boundaries of Tessonilo Park to prevent potential conflict between farmers and animals on the move. So, Sunato, what are we looking for exactly during a patrol like this? Well, uh, we, we do the patrolling twice a week, and we checking around uh, in, in the area whether there is any uh, recent elephant visit. Uh, what I mean is a, a wild elephant visit to near uh, this area. Yeah. And talking with farmers if they have any problem with uh, crop raiding by elephants. Is there lots of conflicts uh, between uh, wild elephant and humans around here? Oh, yes, yes. Definitely, because of these uh, uh, very close uh, boundaries between the, uh, the forest, the elephant habitats, and uh, the plantation areas. Yeah. So your, your role really is to push back the wild elephant uh, in, in the national park. Yes, as, as much as possible, we would like to, uh, well, the, the flying squad team would like to prevent it from, uh, I mean, prevent the wild elephant from even coming into the, the plantation areas. Yeah. Because once they're in, it will be more difficult to drive them back. So if we can, uh, we will do as much as possible. There are some locals in front. Yes, let's uh, talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> Nice to meet you. So, Sunato, did they have any problem with the uh, elephant here before? Did they see elephant around? Pak, di sini gajah liar pernah datang nggak pak ke kebun bapak di sini? Yes. There is one that wanders around here regularly, a large male. Yes, he's caused damage in rubber plantations and also destroyed clusters of palm trees. Despite this, we have the utmost respect for these elephants. They are a bit like our grandparents. <laughs> and can we see any uh, damage around here that you know, wild elephant did? Walk on this side. You will see. Every day, an adult elephant will consume between 150 and 200 kilograms of plants of all kinds. 
If it cannot find its daily ration within the park, it wanders off in search, often penetrating into the plantations. Wow. An elephant did that? Yes. Wow. They're very, very powerful. Especially if they want something that they want to get. Like what? Like food? Uh, in many cases, uh, like the elephant look for uh, either food or salt. They really like salt, the mineral. Yeah. Are you bitter towards the elephants who destroyed your home? Of course not. They didn't know it was a house. They were looking for food, that's all. The educational work of the flying squad seems to be working here, near the WWF camp. But conservation efforts are not appreciated by all. The Mahouts sometimes take great risks and their lives are often threatened by poachers. Many illegals have organized themselves into stronghold villages and claim ownership of the protected forests. These people are not happy with what we work. Uh, we, we try to stop the deforestation, which means that uh, we are stopping somebody from doing business. And for sure, they're, they're not happy with that. And what they did was, was kidnapping one of our team members. The destruction of the habitat doesn't only affect the populations of wild elephants. Sumatran tigers, another species critically endangered, struggle to survive in what remains of the forests. In 1900, there were still more than 100,000 individuals of tigers uh, in the world. And now the latest estimate uh, in 2010 or so uh, was only 3,000 about 3,000 individuals left. Sunato and his team have established a catalog identifying the last Sumatran tigers. They can accurately track the growth of the population that took refuge in what remains of the Teso Nilo Park. GPS, okay. This is WWF camera trapping teams. Uh, the, the tiger team, they're trying to estimate the tiger population in this area, in Tesonilo National Park. Okay. Siap. Siap. Lanjut. Okay, semua siap. Okay, dah. Lanjut. How do you choose a good spot for a camera trap? There are many things to consider for that. Uh, first of all, is, is, is it a good trail where you yeah. find a lot of animal signs there that uh, the tiger would likely to pass? Yeah, so, so you will choose a, a passing site or even a resting site? And... Yes, yes, and, and passing site will be uh, the more likely place that we will yeah. find, yeah. That's a good spot. Yeah, GPS. Can be. So we have a, a curve here, uh, especially for video. It uh, it will give the opportunity for us to capture the tiger scenes from there, and the uh, other camera that will have a still image will capture the full frame also from here. That way we can uh, identify the individual uh, more surely. The situation in, uh, about, uh, for Sumatran tiger, uh, the, the latest estimate was around 400 individuals. And now I think with the forest uh, uh, being converted uh, so widely, uh, we figured that the number uh, is much lower than that. A census of these remaining tigers by motion detection cameras takes weeks to complete. There is no respite for the team. Again tonight, the brigade must intervene. Elephants were seen on the edge of a large plantation. A team is quickly dispatched to the scene.
Motorcycles are preferred to elephants for this risky nighttime operation. The traces left by the passage of the herd are obvious. Sunato is called in as backup. The team will try to scare the elephants using guns. The noise scares the animals, but no one can predict which way they will go. In the early morning, the team goes in search of the elephants to see if their actions of the previous night helped move the herd to a safe area, far from the plantations. So the elephants are on the other side of the river? Yes, yes, they are. The herds are across the river. Yeah, the farmer just told me that they, they just went across the river this morning. Okay. And by this time of day, uh, we should expect that uh, they cross this place to find a more shady place for, uh, for them to rest. So also. they are in the in a plantation right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But that's another plantation on the other side. Yeah, that's the problem here. Yeah, everywhere is plantation, so it's hard for the elephant. We are just at the limit of Palaraja National Park, and we hear farmers who are attempting to hunt elephants off the plantations. Part of the herd just crossed the river. It now requires a lot of caution, because obviously these elephants have become aggressive towards humans as they are constantly being pushed out of the plantations. The challenge here is that to chase the elephant, uh, you need to uh, direct them to a place that is safe. But here there is almost nowhere they can go. The owner of the plantation company has deployed a group of workers to hunt elephants in the palm grove. This small army, equipped with fireworks, stalk and surround the elephants, who don't know where to go. A sad circus in nature, where the elephants have become the victims of a real hunting party. You know, normally when you come in forest to see wildlife, you like it, you know, calm and, and quiet and it's almost unreal. Go here, but there's somebody there again. Yeah. yeah. Again, there there's trapped. so many noise here. Yeah. The elephants have left the first plantation, but must quickly turn back when faced with the attacks of the neighboring plantation workers. We are living in like a, like the war zone. Oh, 
the fear in the eyes of these elephants, trapped between two plantations. The men regroup. The hunt is about to resume. trying to survive despite this kind of situations. Almost every one of them got different kind of scars in their body because they've been tortured here and there. Slowly, 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 run up. And now we are safe. in the middle of the two plantation and they don't know where to go. Yeah. Different people chasing from different yeah. directions. So they must be really confused. The sad circus continues until nightfall, where each plantation owner is desperate to hunt elephants on their land. But the elephants simply have no more protected areas in which to survive. National parks such as Tesonilo are reduced to almost nothing. And the Indonesian government, complicit with the industry, continues to turn a blind eye to the illegal acts. I have the privilege to work with this magnificent species, including uh, elephant, tigers, and rhinos. And they are categorized as critically endangered under IUCN criteria. All of these uh, species or subspecies are in that category now. The next step beyond that is extinct in the wild, and we really don't want them to be there. Sonato and his team's efforts to save the last wild elephant populations are remarkable, but they are not enough. Contributing to the ever-increasing demand for palm oil for our consumption, we are all responsible for the industry's strength. But there is not only bad news for the flying squad. An elephant calf has joined the ranks of the famous brigade. Good news for a species on the brink of extinction. Surveillance cameras installed in the Tesso Nilo Park also show encouraging pictures. New tigers, unknown to Sonato's team, will be added to the identification catalog. A female and her young. The hope of an entire endangered species about to disappear forever. What good news for a country that so badly needs it. Mm -hmm. 